So you wish you understood Rokoko Studio intimately. Not a problem. Now this is not a sponsored video, but I can honestly say that I would recommend this suit to anyone considering purchasing full body mocap. On top of the software being beautifully simple and intuitive, Rokoko's customer service has been the best service I have ever had. They have literally and personally answered every single email I have ever sent. And I've sent a lot. That being said, I'm only going to cover the free version of this software because I I definitely don't have money and you probably just spent your life savings on the suit alone. So here we go. From the main menu, if you click the evil donut on the top left, you can report any software bugs you find here. You can exit the program up here or over there. In settings under graphic performance, you can change the quality. And this is important because in the free version of the studio, you don't have control over the export frame rate, but you do have control over the quality. And last time I checked, the lower the quality, the lower the frame rate. And the difference between high and low quality was barely noticeable, so it's a pretty good workaround if you want to export fewer keyframes. Sound enable means that you'll hear a noise every time you record or stop. Keep it on, it's useful. Here you can tell Rokoko where you live. It helps them deliver pizza to you directly. <laughs> Just kidding. I have no idea what they do with that information, but I give it to him anyway. This number tells you what port is being used to listen to your suit. You can change the size of the studio here, and you can choose between a checkerboard or a grid pattern for the floor. Everything with a lock just means you're poor. Nothing wrong with that, we'll just never know what these do. Virtual production is something I believe you will need to use the Rokoko add-on in Blender, and helping guides allows you to decide what warnings you will see when you wear the suit. Usually the suit will tell you when it senses magnetic interference, but if you don't want to hear about it, turn it off. If your suit is having problems, you can try this to debug it and test it out. If you want to know what the hotkeys are, click this. And if you ever need help or need to find a specific tutorial, you can check out the documentations or open the guide. Outside here, you can add new actor profiles on the right. You can change the name, color, and all the measurements down here. And it even has these cool pictures to help you know what to measure. On the left side, you can see all your past projects. You can organize them alphabetically or by date created. You can also open an old project or start a new one by clicking here. And if you click the diamond or these words, you'll go to the sandbox where you can start recording. If you'd like to buy other people's animations, you can go to the motion library up here. If you look up to the right, you will see everything you can't afford. And if you click over here, you can see your account details. Right next to it is what you click when you plug your suit directly into the computer the first time to set it up. Check out my last video if you'd like to see how. All right, and the last thing to cover is the recording options. Once you have the suit plugged in, you can pick which actor profile you want it to use here. And you can link it to your suit by dragging it here. It'll show you which sensors are getting the best data at the bottom right. Yellow usually means there's something metal close by, but usually it's fine as long as you don't see red. You can hide the information by clicking here and control how transparent the menu is with this. And here is where you can set the animation filters. If you don't want the toes to bend, you can turn this yellow one off and decide how it behaves above the floor. Treadmill disables the position variable to force you to stay at the center at all times. This is great if you're recording video game animations where you might need to loop things like walking or running. It defaults to letting you move up and down, but you can disable that by checking this box and Instead. Locomotion is the opposite. It allows you to freely move anywhere in the scene. Now, in my experience, normal is actually the one that requires less cleanup. So that's the one I'm sticking with, but feel free to use the one that works best for you. All right, you're done. In the next video, I'll show you how to open and edit animations that you've recorded and explain the export settings to get them to your character. As always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you.